Hi, I'm Mason Ruffner with John Broughton on Retrospectives on 3SER KC Radio. Uh, was there any particular thing that first made you want to be a musician? Any initial inspiration there at all? Well, uh, the initial inspiration, uh, uh, I guess, would be... Uh, mm, the really got me going would be Jimi Hendrix. Uh-huh. And what was it about Jimi that, that caught your eye? Well, you know, I mean, I... I, I I kind of, I kind of was drawn to guitar music a bit, you know, as a teenager. Uh, but but when when I heard him, uh, it really made me want to play. Just uh, you know, he, I think he kind of redefined the electric guitar. Yeah, you know that about that. I guess through him, that was your introduction to blues as well. Well, no, I had heard a little bit of the blues, you know. Uh, uh, not much, but just a little bit. But he really wasn't my introduction to the blues. It was just some people in the crowd I was hanging around with at the time, uh, you know, uh, would have some Robert Johnson albums and uh, Howlin' Wolf and all. And I uh, I got off on that. And uh, after I started playing, I think uh, I really kind of tried to uh, play the blues a little bit when I started because I mean, it's just a good place to start. Oh, for sure. Give me your first guitar. Well, uh, my first real guitar, I think, was a, uh, it was a Fender, uh, it wasn't a Stratocaster, which I got later, I don't remember the model, uh, actually, but it, it was a, a cheaper Fender, maybe a, a music maker or something, I don't remember. Right, now you spend a, a great deal of time in New Orleans in your early years, how important do you look back on that time now in terms of your, your grounding as a musician? Well, it was, uh, I, I, I don't know, I guess early on I, I gravitated to stuff that uh, is still with me, meaning the blues and Hendrix. I'm still, I think in some ways, uh, always chasing the ghost of Hendrix as far as just the tone he got on his guitar, if nothing else, and his touch and his phrasing. Uh, but also, you know, the blues, too. I, I think that that's really the, 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 the main thing that I... Uh, but I've been influenced by guitar, and also I'd say maybe a little bit Carlos Santana too. Oh yeah, you played behind some some wonderful names working in New Orleans. Any in particular stand out for you? Oh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I guess I can't think of any that come to mind. Just a, a lot of good experiences from playing there and living there. Were you uh, specifically keen to to record at this stage, or just content with the live work? Uh, say it again, please. At that stage, uh, when you're working in New Orleans, were you specifically keen to, to start a recording career or really just happy with uh, the live work and the grounding you were getting there? Basically, basically at that time, I'm, I'm talking about a time, let's say in the early 1980s. Uh, I, was, I was content uh, just doing what I was doing. I was pretty much just playing blues, and I was playing there on Bourbon Street uh, in New Orleans. And uh, I was just learning and growing and, and content with that I, I really most of the time I wasn't that confident myself I always felt like well maybe maybe tomorrow maybe next year you know I could be good <laughs> enough to make records but never really felt like I was right so it wasn't something you were really seeking out at that stage no uh. right um, let's talk about your, your major label experience there uh, how did that deal with CBS come about initially well, someone that uh, worked for uh, CBS heard me play uh, there in New Orleans and uh, asked me to give them a tape of my music, uh, see if they could, uh, you know, get some, some interest. And um, and that's just basically what happened. I gave him a tape uh, and uh, I got a record deal. Now, I guess from what I've read, they didn't really go out of their way to initially promote and support you, though, did they? Uh, my first recording uh, was uh, not really promoted at all, as far as I know. It, uh, you know, I got real good reviews, but uh, just never got any promotion. They got behind you a bit more with a second release. What was there anything in particular brought about their their change of attitude there? Well, basically, I was uh, I was the, on tour with uh, the firm. Uh, after my first album, that was Paul Rogers and Jimmy Page's band. Yep. And, uh, a lot of the people from CBS came to watch the show and 
uh, you know, after free tickets, I guess, and and really liked me. And then the head of the company had a uh, Epic, which was the division I was under. Ray Anderson uh, saw me play, and you know, like got me a big budget, Dave Edmonds, and all that, and got behind me. How would you uh, compare your first two producers, uh, Rick Derringer and Dave Edmonds? Differences between the two. Uh, let's see. You know, uh, it's hard, it's hard to say in a way because you know when I well my first record I just had just no experience and didn't know anything about the studio. I'd never recorded before anything, so it's kind of hard to compare that against uh, you know my second experience where I I had more experience and all and was really trying to make a different kind of record you know they're just they're both very talented people and uh i enjoyed working with them them both i i, I had just had a better idea of what was going on working with dave edmonds i think yeah gypsy blood did a lot better for you than the first album but i believe uh, you still weren't entirely happy with, with the sales just the same but i wasn't entirely happy with what the sales with, with the style or sound, what did you say? The sales of the album. Oh, the sales? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I, I really thought, you know, that was my uh, my best shot at, at having some commercial success in the business. And, and to me, you know, anything other than gold or platinum was a failure. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I was disappointed. What brought about your departure from CBS? Was, was that something that they initiated? Well, I uh, I recorded uh, Gypsy Blood in uh, nineteen. That was released in nineteen eighty seven, and I was on the label until about oh nineteen ninety two. They gave me about another five years to make a record, and I just never did get around to making one. So they finally dropped me. All right. Did you actively seek another major label deal after that? Well, uh, not really. Uh, what I. I I just, I just wasn't into making records. I just didn't really have anything to say. So uh, I finally got around to doing something, and I made a, uh, a recording with a European label uh, about three years ago and just put it out myself in the States. Would you like to have that time over again, perhaps, to, to tackle it differently? Oh, I'd like to do my whole life over again. <laughs> I'd probably change everything. Yeah. You know, you hear people say they wouldn't change a thing. I don't. Uh, I changed lots of stuff. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to go in with uh, the experience I have now and and all, but uh, can't do that. Uh, I, guess, I guess it'd be difficult to talk to you and not ask you about your sessions with Bob Dylan. Did you have a, a preconceived notion at all what to expect working with Bob? Uh, no, uh, I didn't. You know, I knew his music, uh, but I didn't know the person. And uh, I, uh, I pretty much went in there in the studio. The idea is just to keep my mouth shut and try to uh, try to help out on the record. How did you find his approach to to recording? Uh, well, you know, uh, Daniel Landwall was the producer, and uh, uh, working with such talented people, uh, I just. Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, kind of kept quiet and watched and tried to learn stuff and contribute. But, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm not answering your question very well. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was just it was just an experience. <laughs> yeah. Working it was a with, good one. Working with Daniel, too, must have been a, a real treat. Oh, no doubt, yeah. yeah. And then I uh, played on his record, too. That's right, yeah. His album, and... Uh, have maintained a friendship with Dan and keep in touch with him and uh, consult him and so forth. Right, your fair share of large concert stages over the years, uh, opening for the likes of Crosby, Stills and Nash and U2. Uh, are you comfortable in that or, or more comfortable in a, in a club situation? Uh, it really depends on the crowd. Uh, you know, uh, it can be exciting playing in a big... Uh, Stadium or on a big stage, and of course, challenging. Uh, since I was, most of the people didn't come there to see me; they came to see the headliner. So it was a big challenge to go out there and try to win them over. And then at the same time, it's fun to play in a small, intimate setting where uh, you can tune in with the people yeah. a little bit better. Uh, but it usually just depends 
you know, if it's big, it can be a drag. If people are if people are into it, it doesn't matter about the size of the room. True, true. You're more comfortable on stage or in the studio? I'd say on stage. I'm still not very experienced in the studio. Uh, I, I, I'm not the kind of person. I don't have home recording equipment. Uh, you know that, that that's not my thing too much. Right. What what is the extent of your live work these days, Mason? Uh, my live shows. Yeah. The how how often you're on the road? Well, I uh, I go out for a few weeks and then uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, play in various parts of the states and then I come back and uh, you know uh, play weekend shows around Texas where I live now mm-hmm. any chance of a, a Dan under visit uh, I'd love to and, and had a chance to come over there uh, well it's been 10 years ago when I had gypsy blood out but it, it just never materialized but uh, right now I'm going to go in the studio in two weeks and I'm going to cut another record and this is going to be uh, kind of a rootsy Project. I'm going to record a lot of blues songs that I've written over the years that never recorded and try to get kind of a live feel to it, you know. Oh, terrific. No, no overdubs or anything. What's the uh, what's the makeup of your, your current band there? Well, uh, I, do, I do the guitar and vocals. I have a drummer, a bassist, and a, a keyboard player, you know, plays organ and piano. Any names there that we'd know? Uh I don't know. I, I'm always changing musicians. They're, they're local musicians. I, oh, don't right. think, I don't think you would know them. Tell us a little bit about Evolution, your most recent album. Uh, what, what was your question? Your most recent album, Evolution. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, sure. That uh, that uh, was recorded in, in Austin, Texas, and I produced that myself. Uh, I don't consider myself a producer. I wanted to have people work with me, but we never had a budget to bring some You, no, 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 no matter how good you make a product, if it's not advertised and, and all, people just aren't going to know about it. No, that's right. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure it's happened to, to many people in many different ways of business, but uh, it's a bit painful. If you had to uh, label yourself one or the other, would you call yourself a guitarist or a songwriter first? Songwriter. Songwriter first, guitarist second. Tell us about the songwriting process for you. Do, do you labor over your songs, or do you, can you turn them out at a good rate if need be? Uh, no, I, I really labor at them. I, I'll try every possible word, every possible melody, every twitch I can think of before it's turn it upside down, inside out, uh, bounce it around, see if it'll bounce, if it'll <laughs> fly, you know. Yeah. I, uh, I spend a lot of time at it. I only write a few songs each year. I kind of... Fit I finally figured myself out. You know, I only try to write maybe four or five songs a year. Right, so you're definitely looking for quality ahead of quantity. Uh, no doubt, yeah. yeah. I, I want to be careful what, what I put my name to. For sure. Uh, how do you judge yourself? You're a harsh judge of your own work? Uh, yeah, I think I got a, you know, Ernest Hemingway said it best, you need a good BS detector. <laughs> be a good writer. Yeah. Do you know uh, down under what the BS detector is? Uh I think I do, but tell me anyway. It's a bullshit detector. <laughs> you must know when, 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 when things are, are not cool, when they're no good. I think that's the best quality a writer needs. Uh, too many, I see too many writers just scribble stuff down uh, and put their name to it and don't realize that it's uh, some BS. you got to know, you know, when, when, you're, when you're, uh, your thing is finished, when it's, it's ready, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so I try to have a keep my BS detector on at all times. <laughs> Any of the uh, current crop of songwriters around that that really uh, have caught your attention? Well, always Bob Dylan. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, but uh, be honest, I'm not really influenced by uh, the current crop of uh, songwriters. I would rather stick my nose in a good poetry book or classic literature, whether or not it's Homer. Or Arthur Rimbaud, or 
whatever. That, I find more uh, inspiration in that than I do other songwriters. As far as just music, you know, I, I still just listen to the blues and, and uh, classical music, really. If I was to, to speak to you again in, say, five years' time, what would you like to be saying about the five years just passed? Uh, the five years coming up? Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm going to, within the next five years, I'm going to put out a recording that's going to be an all guitar instrumental recording. It's going to be my uh, my best effort that, that will uh, 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 define my talents as a, uh, a writer of guitar music. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I think I'm going to be. Able, I've got a record in me that uh, very few people could do, and I'm going to do my damnedest to get that together in the next five years. Get that one out. Yeah. Now you mentioned you're about to go in the studio for a new recording. Uh, what else is on your books for 1998? Uh, well, uh, to get that uh, recording, uh, you know, done just right, get it out, get out there and tour. Lots of playing live. All right, so the uh, the road show continues. Right, right. Terrific. Okay, Mason, I won't hold you up any longer. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I appreciate your interest. Let's keep in touch. We'll do. All the best for the new album, and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed we get to catch you down here in the not-too-distant future. I hope so. Thanks again. Okay, take care. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.